This chapter will demonstrate how the S-type separator should be started, operated, and stopped. First, open the heavy fuel oil settling tank outlet valve to the separators. Before startup, Make sure that the air supply to the air valve block is open. And check that the air supply is correct. It should be between 5 and 7 bar, which is 0.5 to 0.7 megapascal. Make sure that the water supply to the water valve block is open. Open the steam inlet and the steam outlet valve on the heater. Open the separator feed pump suction valve. Open the heater oil inlet valve and the heater oil outlet valve. The flow regulating valve should initially be set to about 50% open. Open the sludge outlet valve. Now switch on the power supply. Make sure the mode selection switch is in the manual position. Start the oil feed pump from the pump switch. Switch on the heater from the operator panel. Press the separation button to start the separation process. Before the separator can be started, a number of questions have to be answered. If no work has been carried out on the bowl, press the minus button. No calibration of the system is then required, and the start sequence begins. If, however, the bowl has been dismantled, press the plus button. If the bowl has been dismantled and then reassembled according to the instructions in the service manual, press the plus button again. If the bowl has been cleaned, press the plus button. An automatic calibration of the system is then carried out. Push the separator start switch. The separator speed and the message, wait, are shown alternately on the display until the separator is at full speed. It takes some time for the bowl to be accelerated to full speed. Check the oil feed temperature by pressing the plus button until TT1 is shown on the display. Wait until the oil feed temperature is correct. This depends on the type of oil being processed. Heavy fuel oil mode, 98 degrees C. Lube oil mode, 95 degrees C for trunk piston engines, or 90 degrees C for crosshead engines. Diesel oil mode, 40 degrees C. When the separator has reached the correct speed and the oil is at the correct temperature, standby is shown on the display. Press the separation button on the operator panel to start the separation process. You can use the subtitles to see a recap of what was said in the video. But if you want to see the video again, you can replay this page and review any part of the process.
Listen and observe the startup process. Vibration may occur during startup when passing critical speeds. This is normal and should pass without danger. If vibration increases or continues at full speed, press the emergency stop button and stand clear until the vibration stops. The separator, feed pump, and heater are stopped when the emergency stop button is pushed. Once the zero speed signal has been received, the alarm reset button can be pushed. The message, switch power on off, will be displayed. This refers to the EPC power inside the control cabinet. The cause of vibration must be determined and corrected before starting again. During operation, observe the operator panel information. Heater operation LED lit, green. Separator system operation LED lit, green. Activated valve LED lit, green. Operational information may be read on the display by pressing the plus button repeatedly. The current running program number is shown on the left of the display and the time left before the next sludge discharge on the right. Oil feed temperature. Outlet flow rate. Oil pressure, oil inlet. Oil pressure, oil outlet. Pressure, water outlet. Water transducer value. Accumulated operating time in days and hours. Speed. To return to the normal display, for example, the current program number and time to next sludge discharge, continue pressing the plus button. Alarms are also indicated on the display. To stop the system, push the separation button on the operator panel. The yellow LED for the separator stop sequence starts to flash. A sludge discharge is initiated. The stop sequence LED changes to steady yellow, and the green LED for separation system operation goes out. When the sludge discharge is completed, stop is displayed. If the heater is controlled by the EPC, it is switched off automatically. When the oil feed temperature has started to drop, the oil feed pump is switched off automatically. The separator comes to a complete standstill after about 20 minutes. Standstill is then displayed. If the system is switched off for reasons other than high vibration, it is not necessary to wait for the separator to slow down before restarting the process. This chapter will give you a short overview of the S-type separation system and how it operates in a typical fuel oil system. 
the system is assembled as a compact module containing a control cabinet with a built-in system control unit, separator, feed pump, heater, and various oil, water, air, and sludge connections, control valves and fittings, and measurement equipment. System operation is supervised by a control unit in the control cabinet. The control unit adjusts the parameters of the separating process. The feed pump delivers fuel oil from the heavy fuel oil settling tank to the separator via a heater. The heater the rate of oil supplied to the separator is controlled by an inlet regulating valve. The temperature of the oil is also controlled from the control unit. A three-way control valve directs oil to the separator or to the return line leading to the heavy fuel oil settling tank in case the oil temperature is too low for separation or during bowl discharge. Oil cleaned in the separator flows to the heavy fuel oil service tank. The water transducer continuously measures the water content in the cleaned oil and the regulating valve controls the back pressure in the clean oil outlet. Discharge of sludge and water from the bowl takes place at preset time intervals and the sludge exits through the discharge line. In the meantime, the water accumulated in the separator bowl can be removed to the sludge tank by the water drain valve, which, as you have learned, opens according to the signal from the water transducer. The water valve block supplies conditioning water to the bowl interior and operating water to the bowl opening and closing mechanism. The air valve block supplies motive air to all of the pneumatically controlled valves and fittings. Measuring equipment, for example, temperature transmitters, pressure transmitters, the water transducer, etc., all send their signals to the control unit. Sludge collected in the sludge tank can be pumped out by the sludge pump, started from the control panel.